Howdy folks. Welcome back once again to that Dagum Lawrence Jameson show. Now we're doing two in a row on this Nurgle Rock Bringers. And today's show, I'm gonna be doing a little hobby and painting, working on the bases of some. They're all in about a bunch of different stages and whatnot. And uh I'm gonna be painting a whole mess of them and getting them, you know, up up one more grade higher, you know, on the army that I'm playing, and I'm concentrating on painting the the ones that I'm gonna be playing in my army right now. I'm painting some that you know ain't, but the main concentration is gonna be in the ones that's in my thousand point list that I'm playing in this little league with. So I'm gonna concentrate on them first. <clears throat> now I want to welcome some of the viewer there, the uh, Caspian. I believe he wandered in there over from the Andy and Rim show. I didn't see him over there, so I want to welcome him to viewing the show. And I hope uh, if y'all got any questions, him or any of y'all got any questions while you're viewing it, um, throw them up there in the chat. Uh, I have so little stuff come up there in the chat. Sometimes I miss it, but I'll be, I, I'll try to look up there uh, while I'm doing the show. If you got any kind of questions on what you know techniques and what what not what I'm doing, so I'm gonna move the camera over uh, to my working desk and show what's going on and what I'm gonna be doing on working on tonight. So give me just a second. I reckon that'll show a little bit what's going on. Well, it looks like a whole mess of models that I'm working on at one time, and that is true. Um, I'm working on a sorcerer. This is one that I scratch built myself. Let's see if I can get a little. And I basically, I actually took a blood warrior, which was one of the only human type legs that I had laying around that didn't have a bunch of armor on it. And uh, he still ain't done. He's still in the working phases. And I had a Blight Lord belly because there's a lots of Blight Lord parts that come left over from that Blight Lord kit. And I put a a leftover thing, a leftover stream of corruption, which is one of his spells, his built-in spell. And I got that stream of corruption and throwed a couple of little extra flies on top of it. I got that from an extra leftover from a maggot lord. And this little tree thing that is his withered uh, staff that he uh, carries, it... uh. It comes from the extras from Rodigus that I didn't use on a great unclean one. And the bell was an extra bell that I did not put on the second tree. This feculent gnarl mall that I have right here. And so he was pretty. And then I threw a couple of little tidbits together like different shrouds and different uh, little pieces of cloth like type stuff. I glued on top of him and then a, and then a little bug. A little dragonfly thing up on his shoulder. He'll look a lot better when he's painted. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I put him down to a a hunk of bark, hunk of pine bark. And when that's painted up, pine bark looks really like a shale or a you know different segmented type of rock. Looks just like it. The drawback to pine bark is you pretty much gotta drill holes and put wire in but if you got a couple of tools handy and it's just a couple and that's a roll little roll of wire like this you, some people use paper clips you need a little thing called you call a pin vise which is just a tiny little drill you hold in your hand 
and you need a pair of snippers, a pair of cutters, like that right there. These damn things are holding on to. A pair of cutters like that right there, and some super glue, and you're in there. And it ain't too hard. I'm do, I can do it pretty quick on whole units and all. I've had to just learn how to do it pretty quick, and it it really ain't that big of a, a pain pinning stuff. And if I get to some of that stuff, you know, later on, of course, I'll show it during the during the chef. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, since I got so much stuff that I'm working on, the dang sorcerer, the great unclean one needs to be finished up. The tree, I'm going to sketch paint the tree. So it needs to have its grays dry brushed in. I'm down to dang near just the horns getting colored on this set of plague bearers, but then I'm not really playing those plague bearers. So I need to spend, they're kind of going to be back burner. All these black lords have the skin laid in, the armor laid in, and the armor says done pretty much, but the skin has been laid in and just a wash over them. So they need the skin highlights put on to them. And they need the metallics highlighted. The metallics have done had all the swords then had non oil put to them and typhus corrosion while they were still wet. So it got splashed it on there. Let me see if I can get a good decent. If you can see his sword, if it a dead gum ever focus. There we go. If you can see the brown spots on the sword also have that grit, that sandy grit that's up in that typhus corrosion. And then when I come back and I dry brush that highlight of silver on top of them, it brings out that grit as well. It highlights that grit and brings it out as well, but still leaves that brownie in there and then right after that i'll hit him with a probably a diluted shot of agrax earthshade starting at the base and working your way up just like you know this like if, if that's the way uh, this thing would age if it just kept you know getting blood and blood and not cleaned and not cleaned and not cleaned it would start to collect down there the uh, pommel and all and so that'll be the, the last stage of all that. So that's what they need. And these rot flies, man. And since they've been doing a lot of good work for me in some games, um, I'm keeping them around and I'm fitting to put paintbrush to them. Uh, these are kind of converted. I went with, I didn't want to put them up on them clear stands. I just really, since Games Workshop has gone to the other kind, <coughs> excuse me. Since Games Workshop has gone to the other way of putting uh, streamers and different robes and things all the way to the ground, uh, I think that's just a better way than those clear plastic, the old clear plastic stands, flying stands. And so what I went with here was I took the bell from the great unclean one, which now I'm starting to wish I hadn't. But anyway, I took the bell from the great unclean one and made this some kind of harness on him up here. That you can't see too clear and then i bought some aftermarket bases that wasn't gw um and i cannot lay my eyes on who made these but they're made out of resin and uh they make a head it make a heavier base where you don't have to add no because on flying models man that was one of the things too especially these tall and prickly man you reach over the table if these don't have a lot of good weight at the bottom, they can tip over pretty dang easy. And you know, you've been playing games. Heck, I see people catch them in their shirts and all on that's on a regular base and just pick them up and drag them halfway across the board and then let them fall off into other models, into terrain, all kind of mess. And then this alleviates it some by putting a lot of weight down at the bottom by a resin base so i've done that now and i put this one i added a little snake that little snake mouth to the bottom instead of a snare 
and laid it on top of a skull because this is this resin base is pretty much just a, a whole mess of skulls and skeletons laying there and i put a bigger skull in there and let that snake thing sit on top of it of course i pinned them in like i was talking about earlier i pinned them in with this and this one here i pinned in on the front nose by drilling down into the base and they gotta get technology better on these damn cameras drilled into the base and then i drilled up into the nose cone put a wire and the whole shebang hangs from that thing and, it, and these ain't gonna be sandbags when i'm done and all by the time i'm done that's gonna be like body parts and things that he's sucking up people parts of people that he'll be sucking up on top of that you know? anyway i've decided to go with a non-rocky base on most of all these you know i started with a rocky base on some of them other blight kings i'm gonna go with a more of a swamp look where i put a bunch of nurgles right down and it takes a couple coats for it to get nice and smooth and thick and it actually takes a couple days for it to fully dry and then i'm going to add flock around the outside that's what these plague bearers are fixing to get and i need to I go ahead and add nurgles right to the bases of these black kings so it can be a drying so that maybe by saturday i will uh be able to uh maybe try to finish this uh this unit up it's a little 10 man unit and i mean it ain't little 10 man unit of black lords has a lot of uh black kings i'm i'm sorry has a lot of detail to them of course and a lot of skin which a lot of people don't work, like working with and i'm i really don't favor it myself and i'm not sketch painting these i'm painting these in a normal traditional style where base coat wash highlights and, and such so that's going to slow me down now where it's going to be a quickening is this daggum tree and as I said in that other video, when I first started playing this Nurgle Forest, I thought I was going to need, who knows how many, a forest worth of these trees. Six of them, maybe even. I was thinking. And at $30 a pop, you know, that gets expensive, you know. With a silver and wild wood, at least you get a big old section and all. But uh, with these, when I started playing them with the game, now, of course, the first one of them, you have to set down before anyone picks deployment zones. So you don't know which side the board you on. Um, you know where the objective are most of the time. And you can set one down either right on top of an objective or right next to an objective that kind of scare off an enemy. Especially if they don't realize that how they ain't that powerful. But that is sacrificing what I think is the most powerful. Uh, it's all scenario. Uh, driven though but it, as far as normally i think that's sacrificing this thing's best ability <clears throat> which is catapulting your units because if you end your run you can run and then if you're within seven inches of this that unit can then charge so we're calling it like a catapult and the very best place to set out your first one is in the very middle of the board and that way no matter where the setup zones are it's a good chance you can reach within seven inches of it with the units that you want to make a move now in most scenarios <clears throat> i'm talking about match play scenarios from the general's handbook 2017 in all the scenarios but the first two you start 24 inches away from each other and in them first two, you start 18 inches away from each other. Now, Nurgle, as an army, is not known for speed at all. It's known for resiliency. And, but you can do some shen movement shenanigans with this army to get a daggone Mike Tyson punch in there. You know, Mike Tyson, when he was interviewed one time about what the, uh, 
one of his opponents what are you gonna do about this he's got a strategy for your uppercut or whatever mike tyson said you, you know everybody got a strategy to get punched in the mouth and that's what when you know those are these alpha strikes are now nurgle ain't known for no alpha strikes either because you really can't move a bunch of people around a board but there are certain ways and even with this little uh deal i have this little thousand point army there is ways for me to uh move it around a board very quickly even on the first turn you could you could take these drones you set this tree out in the middle you take these drones you have him be a general the great unclean one he can put grandfather's joy on the drones and he don't even really gotta be close man i mean they gotta be 20 ways better if he's close if he could try to keep up but he ain't gonna be able to now if he had the bell he cut these daggum i'd take this off here and i'm really thinking about it and adding the bell right there way less in close combat but the bell gives nurgle units i believe one seven inches of him uh plus three movement so first of all you give them grandfather's joy which gives them one extra attack melee attack for all their weapons then you give them plus three inch move from there that jack that's jacks them up to an 11 base move then you hope for a roll of a of a two right here i'm sorry of a one to get you the uh add one to the move characteristic and if you can't if you ain't got that you can cast foul regenesis for one of his spells to try to get now this does it this does uh mean you got to roll a few sevens but i mean that's what it is you can you might you can roll a seven but it ain't it ain't too hard to roll seven it's over 50 percent so you roll up and give him two more movement base from this wheel so that give him a 13 base movement you have his daggum right bringer sorcerer cast blades of putrefaction on him which also needs a seven i believe and what that gives them is on sixes they do mortal wounds in addition to any other damage but you know six is to hit it causes a mortal wound so you get these suckers going 13 inches up plus a run let's just say they only get three from the run which is the low side of the average that puts them a 16 inch movement and if you're 24 inches away what does that give you you're gonna have to roll that um eight and if you're in one of those 18 inch away things i mean you practically own them right now so and you're still within seven inches of this thing so you can make your charge of course for like i said about seven you know between seven and eight inches you know you can make you can try to make a charge but once you can get on them with that if you could possibly get this sucker going up he'd have to have that bell himself and the dang wheel would have to be correct he'd have to either make it correct through that spell power genesis if he could get up there and get within seven inches of him give him plus two attacks because plus one from a grandfather's joy plus one from him being within seven inches of a demon hero they're getting a lot of attacks that's about around 45 attacks between the three the three of them and if you crack that down that's almost four mortal wounds on average if you just roll an average six if you ain't hot that gives a four mortal wounds <clears throat> then the very next turn you know if you can get all that to go off again and this wheel goes up and gives them a minus one on, on a on the plus one to their wounds then you're gonna get most of them 45 attacks through 
well more than half through and then you're going to get way more than half because of most of them damage on threes when they when they do hit you're going to bring that down to a two you're going to get they're going to be not only taking them four mortal wounds but they're going to be rolling 20 some saves and they're going to roll a lot of twos the dreaded two and ones and things in them 20 saves that they're going to have to roll 20 something saves from these fellas here and that's just on that one to from three fellas that, that rolled up in there now it's usually not no alpha strike that you can do on turn one because you ain't gonna be able to have a demon hero keep up with him unless it's a lord of afflictions on a fly like him you know there really ain't no other demon hero all of them's moving like four and he, he's moving five even with a bell that takes him to eight even the wheel that takes him to ten you know, and then he'd have a, a long charge. He would never make the charge to get within seven inches for a, a first turn alpha strike with people. I'm just musing, man. I need to get on the painting and quit math hammering and things like that. So the very first thing I'm, I think I'm wanting to do is get my wet palette set up and put this daggum wheel away. So I got all my brushes ready that I took down. Are the ones that I use, the brush I used to dip out paint with, another brush I used to dip out paint with, brush, a wide dry brush, a little bit different dry brush, a GW medium layer brush that I used to do washes and, and shades and stuff, and a GW small layer brush, and an army painter psycho the psycho i guess that's the name of it i don't know it's a very very small brush i use that to paint eyeballs and things things like that but i am going to first break out my wet palette the first thing i do i have a wet palette but it's all dried up it's just a piece of folded up about four layers thick of daggum paper towels. I don't know what you'd call them over in Europe, but it's the one, the ones you use in the kitchen, the thicker ones. Um, in the, we call them paper towels, napkins. Not, I don't know, but that's what they are. So anyway, you got that in a little shallow pan, and you're gonna wet this. And I got a little bottle of water over here. I don't even gotta go to the sink right now. And I'm gonna wet it down. A little bottle of water and let the uh, paper towel absorb. Now I didn't spill a couple paints on here. That, that's what that yelling all is. It went over the edge of my paper. He's got to put some paper down on top. So I let that drown in for a while. And then I pour out the excess. And you see how it's going to get in a drip? I just pour it till, it, till I get that drip. So the stream goes away and then I flip it back over let it run out let the stream run once I get that drip going and then I know I got enough water on there because you don't want a stream being able to come out and just drip then even it back out a little bit put it down now <clears throat> now what you got to put on top of it is this here parchment paper and it's made for baking cookies I reckon that's what is on the front of it um, but it's kind of a waxy type paper and I usually tear off the strip it's about four or five inches wide I usually don't cover my whole nowadays I can't have painting sessions long enough and all to cover my whole I'm gonna tear off a real rip to cover up my whole wet palette I'll just take out a slab of it and cut, cut about a three by four inch piece put that other to the side and i can use it later so i've just cut out a piece of it then i lay it down on top of that now the thing is you got to rub it in if you don't it'll curl like that just curl up like crazy so you got to kind of rub it in especially on the edges now you're smoothing it out rubbing it in and what you're doing is you're allowing it to absorb the water and the water to come up 
into that piece of paper through osmosis and go up in there and equalize and now the paper is ready and how this works i reckon is that when the paint starts to dry out it draws like a plant's roots or whatever it'll draw water from down here in the paper towel to keep the keep the uh paint at a good consistency you know so the first paint i'm going to add down there that i need really i was going to do was some silvers on top of these fellas here and but i wanted to do something quick before i got into all that because i like to do stuff like when i want to uh i like to do stuff that needs to dry for a while i like to do that first like if i was going to do any washes do washes over the top to any of these things i'd want to do it first but i want to dry for a while but i tell you what i do want to dry for a while <clears throat> and it's going to be the uh I'm sorry, I'm just coming off of a cold, man. The longest cold I ever had in my life. So I'm, I got my, I have a little bit of a arr, scratch in, in my voice, but a uh, frog in my throat. So here you go. I'm going to prep this for sketch painting. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to paint. I already got it spray painted black, flat black. Didn't come out quite as flat as I wanted. And I already got the inside way up in there in the mouth painted as good as I wanted. Because it's going to be it'll be real hard to get the way up in there in the damn tonsils of that thing. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to dry brush all around on it. I don't really got to dry brush the damn metallic parts. Like the bells don't have to be dry brushed. But if I get some on there and get some on the chains and all it really don't matter what i'm mainly concentrating on now is dry brushing the parts that's going to get color you know and that's the trunks and uh i guess even these things right here i'm going to do in sketch paint because i need to get these done and on the table i can't spend a day on week painting just one model here like i've been doing so i gotta speed up the process so i'm going to do some sketch paint so for this for this uh Sketch painting, I am not going to use wet palette after all that. I'm going to put it to the side. What I am going to do use is a bunch of fold up paper towels because I'm fitting a dry brush that whole thing. Now, I'm going to use just a little side palette, what I call it, just a regular old palette that's a piece of. A linoleum type stuff just old pieces old piece of metal that i got that i just i dropped paint down on it paint can't uh go through or absorb anything through or try to wick moisture down onto the table through it's solid nothing coming through it so i'm using that as my palette paints i'm gonna use for this one is if i had to buy gw black and GW white paint, I could not afford to be in the hobby. I really don't think. So I'm gonna use this folk art stuff that costs about four or five dollars for a big bottle of these right here. An apple barrel, which is the same thing. It's all made in the same company right here down there, right down the road from me in Norcross, Georgia. It's where all this is made if you look on the dang labels. Of course, I've never been to the plant down there and wonder if I could get, I don't want no second stuff. You know, the dang paint, the top quality they're selling in the stores, you know, is just barely good enough. So I wouldn't, anyway. I'm putting out some black, I'm putting out some white. Now, the size of brush I'm going to use, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I want to get it done quick. I want to use a big brush. At the same time, I need a little bit of control. I don't have one the right size. Reckon I could use that. But for the first coat, I'm going to go big. I'm going to go Mongo. Hey, I wish I had these. 
and I might can. Yeah, get real sloppy on these brushes and not cleaning them. But I believe I can use this this really big one at first. Now, when I start to mix this black and white together over here, what I'm wanting to get is that battleship gray, that that first that gray right there, and it takes a little bit more black than white. And so I'm going to mix up and keep adding. And when, as I come around on the stir, I'm grabbing more. If I think it's too dark, I'm grabbing more white on the stir. And then I'm mixing in that middle. If I think it's too bright, I grab more black on the, well, as I stir. And I think it's too dark right now, so I'm going to be adding more white to it on my stir. Keep stirring it in. I think it's just still a little too dark. Because I'm only going to do two run-ups two shade ups on it that's getting more like it all right and i want to even out what i got on the brush then i want to go over here and wipe most of it off it's a shame ain't it and all that work most of it got to come off now, if it gets a little thick on the, on there, you can uh, you're gonna come back to it second and grab more paint when you start to run out. But the first time since I used this paint, this brush right here to mix with, it's gonna uh, hold a whole bunch of paint. Now I gotta put on spectacles, or I ain't gonna be able to see nothing. And I, you know, and I really, I painted man from painted miniatures. I ain't lying. I was eight years old, and then for many, many, many years, and never had to have no glasses, man. I just had to have a little desk light, little lamp like you have by by your bed. That's all the light I needed, and I paint, paint, paint. Nowadays, man, I need a, a zillion luminance and these dang magnified glasses and all just to see the paint. Anyway, back to it. I like to start on the dry brushing. When I got a loaded up brush that's got a whole bunch of paint on it like I got right now, if I go and first hit the smoother parts of this model, it is going to drag off too much of the paint. And I got I need to get a feel for how much paint's coming off of the brush on the dry brush, how much I got on it. And the best way I think to do that <clears throat> is to pick some of the some of the most textured spots on the model and like up here on these you know and that will allow you to drag lightly over there it's going to drag off and you can start feeling how much paint's on the brush because dry brushing is all about feeling how much paint's on the brush and as you get less paint on the brush you have to put more and more pressure down to get the same results that you was getting or almost like putting your foot down on a gas pedal kind of but that ain't really but but you got to put down more pressure to get the same results later on as you go further as it loses more paint off the brush you got to put down more and more pressure to get the desired amount and as it gets less paint on it that's when you want to hit the spots that are flatter right because that's when you'll get a smoother transition from the vert you know the one color to the next on the dry brushing because dry brushing ain't always got to be a lighter color you know it can be a whole different color and especially if you're going to put a put a dry brush of color <clears throat> this is one of my secrets a dry brush of color on there and it might not be anything. A lot of times it'll be, it needs to be a little bit brighter, whiter, or dang screaming skull or something like that. And then come back over with a different color wash on top of that and let that white take that wash. Or that lighter color, I mean, take that wash. Now you can't even hardly tell right now what is happening to this. Just a few details that start to come out. Now I need to go back over to my palette because I've gone all the way around on this thing. <clears throat> you notice I didn't never turn it upside down. The underneath sides of the of the thing 
of the thing limbs and all stay black throughout the whole thing now look i'm not going up in there and finding the holes i'm working over over the top and as you get lighter and lighter on this thing lighter and lighter color you're going to want to start thinking more and more about how light comes down onto one of these models and how um that a lighter highlight would not reach at all up underneath to the underarms of these things or away up underneath it at all so your last highlights not only got to be lighter in color and lighter in pressure and hitting the higher notes you also really need to concentrate the higher highlight it gets the more of the angle of light projecting it on it you need to pay attention you need to pay attention to that as you add it in now that's about all for that color of gray <clears throat> i need to go back over to my palette and i still got enough white on there that i can grab up some of that gray add some white in and i've come up to a, a, even a lighter gray so i'm probably gonna do this one in a four part because this is a, like a darker aircraft gray but not really that dang one that i wanted yet but i'm gonna go ahead and dry brush with that one since i'm being able to do this whole model with this big old brush in one wiping so i'm wiping off and on this one i need to wipe off a little bit more than i did on that last one because i'm starting back in on the dang on highlights again So I'm going to start up here with the blossoms. And this is what I'm talking about right here that I was just harping on about the light coming down. If you'll notice, the way I'm holding this model is like it would be sitting on the board with this part flat down. And when I come in with that brush on that highlight, I didn't highlight up underneath that blossom even though it's a raised area and has a bunch of raised areas my very first highlight my very first grays hit that just a little bit these other ones don't even hit it at all see how i'm coming down i'm coming down on top of them things and my highest highlights is going to end up being on the tops of those uh pustule or what we call them tubes tubular things all right, and as I start to lose, I still got a good bit on, on this thing, a good bit of, of lighter color. As I start to lose it, then I'll come back and hit these lighter, flatter spots. But I keep thinking about coming down. As I start to lose paint off of it, now I can get on these flatter spots. And then I lose more paint still, I go harder and harder on the pressure. Right? But I'm still thinking about light ain't gonna get way down into them crevices right i'm highlighting the way real light will come down on top of this thing all right and so i'm giving it to it like that as i start to lose like i said as i start to lose you get more pressure all the way around and that's a guess gonna be a good one for that color all right now that one's about used up because they don't want to wipe the same a different color try to dry brush back over side so i just flip it over looks like i need to add a little bit more white to my mix and i still got enough black and gray to drag over as you see you see i couldn't afford to do this with gw paints i got my white i'm gonna start mixing I'm going to bring gray into it. There we go. You see that light aircraft gray? That's what I was looking for really on the second one. Because a lot of times I'll do it in in three steps. And now I'm going to have to do it in four. But now I'm to that light aircraft gray. So got that mixed. Get these tags on the brush it out. So. That's a nice aircraft gray. It'd be on the side of a of a daggone F-15 
Now be careful you don't lay down too far like I did. Like sometimes I ain't too clean with my brush. You notice I did not ever go back to the water. Once I started dry brushing with this brush, I ain't never did go back to the water because there's a reason to call it dry brushing as well, man. You're keeping the paint, you're not powder dry. Not like that daggum stuff that GW is trying to uh, sell people as dry paint for dry brushing. I just, man, some of their stuff. Anyway, you want to keep it wet enough, but you're going to get most of it off. But I didn't go back, so you got to watch about laying down because some of that older color is up near the ferrule and all of this. So make sure you're staying up on the top because you are you're getting the higher highlights as you go higher and higher on the color. So you shouldn't be laying the brush down that hard. Once again, I'm going to start back over with these uh, blossoms. And I'm going to come from the top with my strokes coming from the top tearing off some of the of the uh, thing then i'm gonna go up to some of these snake looking things and some of these tubulars some of the things that have the most texture i'm going very light on top of some of these roots <clears throat> more tubulars i'm trying to drag off excess and get the feel of how much is on this brush <clears throat> excuse me once i get a feel of it i start going more to town I can feel it. I start going on the higher texture parts. Then dang things in the whole time I'm coming down. I'm not going into the underarm, not turning this thing. I'm trying to keep this model oriented the way it's going to be seen from above and from the way it sits on the table. I don't never turn it at an angle when I'm doing these dry brushings because then you're putting weird light and weird shadow weird highlight on it even though it might have a raised detail that's just part of it a raised detail is just part of it how where you're coming in at on the highlights is another big part of it all right that highlight's just about done and you see i'm getting them it looks like i'm doing stabbing motion but i'm actually coming down on top of it coming down on but I'm using real short strokes. So I'm doing a stabbing motion, but I'm not stabbing with the brush. Because at the very end of my stroke, I'm pulling back. I'm coming in quick. Just because I'm fast at it and I've been doing it a while. Even when I do turn, watch what I've done. I did, I did what I did, said I wasn't going to do. I turned the model up. But at, like I said, I've been doing it so much. At the same time I turned my model up, this hand automatically went with it and kept going from what would be the top. I, the whole plane just turned. I'm just been doing it a lot. But anyway, best to keep it oriented straight up and get that. Now I got one more little highlight I'm going to hit this with. <clears throat> the reason I wanted to do this one first is because before you put the washes to this, using this acrylic paint, especially using this folk art paint, you probably could go quicker off, off some GW. But this is going to need about 30 minutes or so to dry completely so that the washes will tint it correctly. Otherwise, sometimes the washes, if it ain't completely all the way dry, and it does dry quick, but if it ain't completely all the way dry, the dang on washes will reactivate uh, these highlights. And, and smudge them and turn them back to mush and that's that's what you don't want you want the, the clear delineation and that's why you're highlighting you know so the lines and all that can be seen clear now i got one more highlight <clears throat> i'm gonna get me a clear now i need to get all that i can of the old gray out of here even though it's that light gray. And so I spent a little bit of time rubbing it out. Now, I'm going to go straight to some straight white. I'm going to rub it completely out. And it's going to turn it a little bit gray. I'm going to go to some straight white again. And it'll be a little bit whiter. And usually about on the third one, 
you're going to start to get some real decent white. So I'm on a third white one. Now I'm on white. Now I don't have to have much on the brush because I am going on the very top. You know I got a big brush. I'm working just the very top, top of them skeleton uh, skull, the top of them tubulars, and I'm going real light on the pressure, like butterfly light, you know, butterfly kiss, right on top of it, just touching with that white, but I can see it lightening, I can see it dragging up and lightening. Once again, I'm coming down from the thing as it start to lose my thing then I can come lose paint off the brush then I can come down to some of the flatter spots and give it some now at this stage on this dry brush which is one of the most important ones of the four dry brushes I've given it the lighter you go which means the more pressure on this I'm talking about the higher to white you go on this the more it is really going to take the colors right but if you want a darker one you don't go as high now you this is about medium is what i call it and you could go one more white and go a little bit heavier all on this thing i wish it would focus there you go i could go one more up but I'm going to leave it at this because I want a kind of a darker tree to go with my other one that's also darker. So I'm going to put this to the side and let it dry for about 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. And then if I got time and all, I'm going to uh, get to the washing of it. Either way, right now it looks cool in black and white. And it looks better than it did in just the black. Now I'm going to get rid of this palette. I'm going to go over to that wet palette that I made with the paper towels and all. And I am going to go to a new paper towel here. I need one. Oh, don't tell me. I got one left. Okay, I got a couple of paper towels. I always like to fold them up. This is about my size. I like to work with to take water off the paint brushes. To some people use the back of their fingernail. I see on the internet and this and whatnot. But one more thing before that other paper towel well, is gone. I need to wash that brush out once I finish that white because I got a whole pile of brushes over there that ain't washed out that I just leave. Now I do can revive them with some of that hand sanitizer i can revive them back up even after they've been dried up for a month but i, I let too many of them just sit there like an old bowl of cereal that don't get washed it sits by the damn sink crisp up in a damn one or two apple jacks it's stuck to the side of it real hard and you got to take a spoon and then rub it crack crack it off the side of the bowl and then sometimes man you're just like man i bet it's probably still good and if it ain't nobody looking then you pick up that applejack out of that bottom of that bowl after you crack it loose with that spoon and put it in your mouth and man most of the time you was right that applejack is still good and that little bit of spoiled dried up milk it ain't that little tiny bit it'll take a lot more than that to make you sick but uh anyway with all the stuff i eat it'll take a little bit more than that to make me sick but i shouldn't be jinxing myself about talking about getting sick man i swear i had the longest cold i've ever had in my life and i'll be glad to see this springtime come along all right, the next thing I'm thinking I'm gonna do is a little bit of basin. And even though I was running my mouth by how I'm gonna 
do things just for the units that I'm using in my thousand point army. Well, like I said, I need I'm doing stuff right now to get out in front of it that's going to need to sit and dry. Like that dang feculent normal is needs it's going to need to dry. So what I'm going to do here is put my wet palette to the side once again. I'm going to break out another one of them dry palettes, squares. Get it ready. Now on the plague bears and on this daggum gray unclean one right here. I've done said about as much Nurgle rot as I want to for right now on it. Pretty much like I said, established the, a pattern of where this thing is. And there's and one thing I'd like to say about people putting down uh, grass and splotches and Nurgle rot and thing rotten and thing. That's one of the things you want to stay away from is splotches. Um these bases are small, man, and if you put just dots of grass like polka dots. It, it looks like something's either kill. Uh, it might be good for Nurgle though, something killing the grass. But it don't look natural. Even on one of these big bases, something like this, it's going to run end to end. You know, and you almost got to make a camouflage pattern if you're not going to cover the whole thing. You don't just put a small spot here and a small spot here. Even on these type of bases. You know, as you see, I run that Nurgle right about half the base but it's going you know edge to edge i didn't just avoid the edges and all of a sudden i put a bunch of splotches so that's one thing is just a design technique man that'll make it look more realistic and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the bases or finish off the base not finishing but i'm going to add some little bit of flock and some little bit of uh weeds and all to these bases on him and on these, just so I, I, and then I might, I might finish off them rims too. And I've decided that in a kind of a daggum uh, paying homage or, or, or such to uh, the old days, I'm not going to do goblin green, but I'm going to do death guard green edges on these, all these Nurgle bases. And so I'm going to have Death Guard green rims on all of them. So, and I'm going to try to get these, you know, to a better state. He's not going to be done by this coming weekend's games. Talking about this uh, great unclean one. But I'm going to be driving on to him. And, I'm, and I'm, my main theory about this army here about painting him was this. Man, I could spend a few weeks just on this guy right here, Hero, painting him all the way up. But I'm using that method of getting him to a stage and then they're going to take him to another stage and take him to another stage. Right now, he's fully playable, man, on a table. He's got a decent paint job. He's got the base coats in. He really does have his highlights on his skin already. His horns ain't done. His face ain't completely completed. The mouth is 90% and all. But most of the boils and all still haven't been uh, tinkered with enough. To make them look realistic and done the washes and the highlights on the boils and stuff yet. And I'm about halfway done on his chains and on his flail and his sword. His sword's a little bit more than halfway done. But I'm going to go ahead and do part of his base so he can be even further down. And I can put him to the side for a while concentrate on things that ain't even got a lick of paint on them like these rock flies. So... I'm going to go ahead and do these bases because that's something that needs to dry. Once again, I have got out a piece of dry palette. And I'm going to go over here and grab a piece of glue, a bottle of glue. Now, what glue I'm using is this. It's yellow glue from that you use to do woodworking, like carpenter's wood glue, tight bond would be one of the brands and but they sell it dang everywhere it's just the same thing as elmer's glue or ooh or any other dang you know glues like that and uh so i'm gonna put out a little bit of glue 
That's going to be bad enough. I'm going to have to dilute it sometimes on this air. This damn. There is a lot of humidity around where I live. But in the winter time, when I run a central type air, con air conditioner up in this house, it dries everything out considerable. That's a good and a bad. Paints dry pretty dang considerable fast. But your wet pallets even dry out pretty quick. That dang paper towel will dry out like in the desert. And uh, the glue and things you put on a dry pallet dries really fast because of the dryness from the thermos from the uh, heater and all up in here. So first of all, I put out me a dab of that glue. I'm going to pick me a brush to do the painting. And I want something that can reach, have a little bit of reach. I want something that's got a little bit of stiffness. I believe I'm going to take this one. And the numbers done will roar all off of it. I couldn't tell you what number to reach it is, but it's an old roughhouse brush that I use to grab paint out of these GW pots and put it onto a palette and for things like this. So I'm gonna take my first guy and wait, I forgot to show you the other part of what I'm even gonna put on here. I ain't putting rocks or nothing like that. I'm putting flock on it, right? Cause this is supposed to be like a nerdy uh, swamp, but you know, at the same time, there's a lot of growth and stuff. So the great unclean one, he's gonna have to move and jump and just sit on top of these paints, I reckon, man, if he'll sit and not crash. I have a lot of problems with crashing stuff in here. I flipped this whole table over chasing a fly the other, the other day. I wish I had it on video because it was something. Now, I have made me a plate fit for a king, a hobby king, it is. And it's a bunch of flocks. This different colors that I'm working with on another project. And it's a bunch of different color green flocks. I got some olive colored stuff. You know, I got some lighter olive type stuff. I got some yellowish. That looks infected already. I got some of the darker flock, some of the regular green, some of the fluffier green. And I'm not going for bushes at all. I'm going for low ground cover here. Otherwise, I would do it afterwards because if you go for the bushes and then you spray damn dull coat on top of them, then the... Uh, the Dolco can melt the bushes. With this little bit of flock, the Dolco is going to mist over the top of it and not really hurt it. Then I got some that I, that I got at the last second that I found. It's kind of a brownish, but with some red things mixed into it. It looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do first is put, is get glue all over my paintbrush. But I'm a messy one. I am going to use this paintbrush to paint glue around the spots on this base of this filler and all the rest of them that don't have the Nurgle rot put to it. And then I'm going to use this to sprinkle around on top of that glue and blow it off and whatnot. And then set it aside to the dry. All right. So here we go. The first one, he's named Plague Bears. They have done played their way out of my Nurgle thousand point list by not hardly doing nothing. And it could have been dice rolls and situations that turned my heart against them. But I'm not a believer no more in these things uh not at that point cost not at no daggone 120 man and uh when just for 40 more points you get some murders in them dang blight kings with more wounds twice as many damn wounds three or four more who knows how many of the times offensive power that they have and if you say well just cut the resiliency man the resiliency of the bite kings is how many wounds they have they just suck them up man then you gotta just reap them down they go down slow they go down a lot slower 
than most people think. And I've been hit recently by big units of buffed up uh, line units or battle line units. And 20 and 30 man squads against these guys, man. And I end up on top, man, by just re just sticking around long enough to where my leaders can get up there and put just a little bit of mortal wound here, a little bit of mortal wound there. That's all it takes. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking just a little pinches. I need to stay over my plate. Taking little pinches of these colors. And dropping them down on here. Now all gonna be a little bit different. All right, I'm gonna use the very middle to do <clears throat> to drop in my mix and <clears throat> try to keep all my stuff separate on the outside. Give him a blow. <laughs> Give him a blow job. And there we go. And I just got a low, a very low. I miss a little spot. Here we go. Got a low spot of flop. Take to the next one. This is that leader. <clears throat> now, how did them plague bears play their way out out of my good graces? Well, for one, the very first game I played them in, they killed the banshee. They jumped on her by themselves. And was able to kill her. And the ones that she killed, I was able to bring back. And they did save a few wounds to, through disgusting resiliency. They saved a few. And But come time to the very end of the game, when I really needed them to go up and bust somebody in the mouth, and they were all the people I had. To go up to an objective that was being held by a bunch of weaklings. By a bunch of uh, crip ghouls. You know what I'm saying? So, all I, need, all I wanted them to do was go up there and get about four wounds. And make it. And they made the charge. And... Now, my maggot lord, who was also rampaging there late in the daggum game on turn five, and I had the last turn on turn five on that game. My maggot lord, who was also rampaging toward them same daggum people and all, or the same crypt ghouls that was holding that objective. That's all that fella had left in his whole army was 10 crypt ghouls on the objective. And the only way I was going to win was to kill enough of them suckers off that I had took the objective. All right. And I put enough models up there, these plague bearers, to do that, man. I thought. And I could not do it. Could not do it at all. They got up there, they didn't, they did one wound. They killed one of those things. And he won the game. And so I wasn't trying to blame the whole game on the Plague Bears. But I was thinking to myself, it's almost like, you know, one of these damn wide receivers on my team uh, in Atlanta. I won't name no names, Julio Jones or any of y'all like that. Uh, it's like one of them dropping the damn ball late in the game, fourth quarter or whatever. Very end of the game, uh, NFC divisional round against the Eagles. I'm not naming no specific times and places, though. Julio Jones. It's just like dropping a ball. You know, and so they drop the ball. Then, in the next game that I played with them, I kept them around. I didn't throw them straight out the list just because they made one bad a couple rolls. That my 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 fault really, you know. Half I'm the one rolling the dice. I kept them around, and in that second game, they tied in to a daggum grave guard of skeletons, and it wasn't pretty.
a buffed up grave guard unit of skeletons I might add and it wasn't pretty at all man they took it on the damn chin and it was nothing but just a couple little tactics of mine that slick tactics that had them even survive the second round against them fellas and didn't do jack shit of course oh my goodness i should not have cussed but they didn't do nothing against them them grave guard in the end because any of the ones that i killed was brought back immediately by them grave sites and i don't know who come up with them grave sites for death but it's something it's something you got to take into consideration when you play in a death and that and and some sucker starts planting graveyards out everywhere it's something because they can bring a lot of models back you got to hit them real hard you got to hit them real hard and you almost gotta in fact play three rounds against this fella his death army before we just finally just threw up our hands because i had a stormcast ally with me trying to take on this fella that had that death army skeletons all buffed out through the new through the new uh death book and such but after three rounds we had put uh, uh, wounds on these skeletons man considerable amount sometimes nine ten wounds man in a turn on these but there was 20 man units of skeletons and man almighty he, he just after three rounds he still had hit every single model on the board that he started the game with after three rounds due to them daggum graveyards and one of his heroes helped him bring them back but he had every one of them on the board we could not defeat him so back to these ain't flag bears once again i am putting glue around i'm dabbing around this glue and i like this glue because it's thick and you can you can work with it it doesn't go everywhere you can get it right up to the edge without taping off an edge or anything like that you're just working with it and it's so thick and gelatin like that you can get it to go where you want and all i'm doing like i said is i'm putting flock sprinkling flock over in some places that's not where i put the nurgle Right, and I put the Nurgle right about 50, 50 60 percent all over these bases. Focus, come on. There it is. So there you can see where the the glue. And not a whole lot of flock. I don't want, I just want texture down there, you know. I don't want bushes. I don't want all that glue on my brush either. But I'm so sloppy. I just lay it down in the glue. Okay, once again, it's other working my way around on them. But like I said, in the second game, these plague bears got the nose kicked in by a grave guard that was buffed up and only due to terrain and some slick maneuvering of mine was even kept him alive end up not already doing no damage worth for nothing and then in them two games my rock my daggum uh, putrid blight kings was doing so well that I had to start tailoring my list, especially a smaller thousand point list where you don't got, you know, everything. You can't take everything. But if you want powerful in a thousand point list, man, you got to take a, at least a couple of the most powerful units you can that can get the most powerful bus. And I deem that to be the putrid bright blight kings because i can i'm playing right now with the 
great unclean one as my general. But that's mainly just for practice. Because I'm telling you, I can shoehorn in a glocking in a thousand point list. And I know it's cheese ball, but if it's tournament, I mean, anything goes in them tournaments as far as that goes, right? So I am thinking about taking that glocking two units of black kings and dang lord of plagues and something else small i think i don't even know how many points i got left i might have enough points to take maybe just a dark oath chieftain ally or something such but i'm gonna see once i add it all all the way up but i gotta get the glocking in some such of a state of paintedness before I'm going to allow myself to use him as a general on the table. Yeah, I've been running the drones uh, just in a primer state for two weeks. And I feel bad about that. The way I talk down on people that don't paint the models, I feel like a damn hypocrite. But the amount of models I'm getting painted per week, shows that i ain't no hypocrite i just i'm gonna get to them and i will you tell you the truth when i shifted gears off of the of the i wanted demons in my army and to the i want to need mortals in my army you know the demons kind of took the back seat and i wasn't even gonna run them drones till i started seeing how good the ability was of giving them plus one attacks from my grandfather's joy from the command ability of the great and clean one so you had to make the great and clean one your general so i was using great and clean one on the board by making him my general really the only demon units i had that was worth a slaying on that and if i can get a sorcerer up in there i may get a sorcerer up if i could get that glockin and a sorcerer it would get it would get ugly and a bunch of black kings that might be my list i'm gonna have to look closer into it if i can wedge all that in get a two units of black kings a sorcerer a rock bringer sorcerer i'm talking about a lord of plagues and i did i say black and i did say black King. i believe that's all i'm gonna be able to get in there because i'm sacrificing my drones Sacrifice my demons, which I won't need so much because the Glock can bust uh, everybody uh, attacks, including all uh, two units of uh, future Black Kings that I have. So even though them is going to get <coughs> plus one attacks, <coughs> but he's in for four attacks, which takes that unit you know 15 plus 40 you know takes them up you know one more attack each takes them to 20 attacks you know and that jacks them up close actually over three damn mortal wounds not mortal wounds three damn explosions on their hits and i'm really really thinking about going to a lord of blights and running with him and seeing how he's gonna do against i'm up to my 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 big end now i'm really thinking about getting a lord of blights and seeing how he's gonna do and buffing all my blight lords to that plus one rend now that said it seems to me in my area there's a mess a daggum death armies night haunts that ignore any kind of dang save modifier and then rend and shit like and stuff like that but and then they got other ones just doing the same thing you know ignoring rend off you so and what did i face i faced all that dang lizard men I faced all that damn Seraphon, and they had 
any, you know, no plus one wins, but luckily I had a weapon or two here or there that had a minus two rend. So I was able to get through a couple of them with this big sword, of course, has a negative two rend on it. But I'm I'm really debating on how I'm really going to equip this this uh this sucker for the tournament because they're talking about this army because I could go I could go with trying to just counter death and what that means is debuffs on their hits to try to stop them from getting into mortal wounds. You know, and more mortal wound generator things for myself, which, you know, that's that's pretty much a given. You want to always, if you can, generate some of the best mortal wound generators, but not at the expense of, you know, other things that you might have your army themed around. Like I said, trying to uh, go against a death force. You know, you'd want to you want things like that. Uh that's that make them re-roll sixes you know things that uh bring the hits down uh, a lot of their bravery is up there with the demons too tens so stuff that fools with their bravery you almost gotta look at unit by unit if you're having some problems with tough units but most of their bravery is pretty high and so you need to concentrate if you're going to knock them out and knock them all the way out too. All that death has such regeneration. And like I say in my other video, to these Nurgle guys, man, you play to their strengths. Their strengths are the resiliency. And not only that, it's the, the disease and the, a couple more to wounds here. A couple mortal wounds in this phase. A lot of mortal wounds in the dang hero phase. A lot of chances to give mortal wounds. And so you just you just infect, infect. And the closer you are and the more stuck in to close combat that you are, heck, that's that's all the better. You know, that's that's going to be just even more mortal wounds that you're going to be able to dish out you on them a lot of them short range attacks because even from the blight kings the future blight kings themselves on that hero phase virulent discharge i believe it's called they have even on that one man it will surprise you how many sixes you still got a 16 percent chance every time you pick up a single dice to roll a six it's a 16 percent chance you know that ain't nothing so it's going to happen and you just want to hope that it's going to happen at the opportune times, at the best times, the one of the times is going to uh, benefit you the most, you know? And if those things happen, you can make them things happen, you're going to do well and win more than you're losing. All right. If you can take a look at there. I got to fly around where those pools are of the muck, right? And so I'm going to put him to the side, and let him dry. I got them dry, and I'm also going to put this to the side. I made a mess with that. I did. I'm going to take my brush, get most of the glue off of it. I'm going to clean it out with some water. Oh, it's so sticky. Okay. I'm going to put this dry palette to the side. So let it dry out. Clean off my table a little bit. Now I'm going to bring my wet palette. Now I'm going to paint something else. So what I'm going to do is I need to get these suckers started. And when you spray them all down green like this, it, it acts as a base coat as well. And I'm not sketch painting these, or am I? Am I? Am I? 
Cause you can sketch paint right over the top of them greenies, but I ain't, I ain't gonna do it. I need to wash it first, you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wa I'm gonna wash these fellers because that's gonna be something that needs to dry. And what I'm gonna wash them in is the Anthonian camo shade. Anthonian camo shade. It's kind of a darker green, kind of is a camo type green. It is dark. It's not quite as dark as non oil. And I'll usually come back over later after this dries. I'll use non oil in certain places, deeper recesses and all, in places that didn't take all the way. So I'm going to get a bigger brush. I need a dang big hogger brush. To do the green and I'm doing his body all right and start up there I'm doing it shell it should drop something yeah if I get a little bit on that bell down there it don't matter I want to do these arms okay I want to do the back shell and this is like the opposite of when I was talking about dry brushing uh, from just the top angle. You want to do this all over and use all angles and twist the model all up and down. You want to get all up in the underarms and everywhere with these washes like this. If you're doing the overall wash like this. Now, since he's a plague bear, I'm going to go ahead, and he's already green. I'm going to go ahead and wash him, too. Basically, I'm going to do everything on the model except for the wings. I'm going to go ahead and wash down with that Athonian camo shade. Now, the parts that's purely metallic, like the belt here, and that belt that he's right sitting on, they do not have to be washed because they're going to be covered in metallics. But you want to go around. Thin them all every which way and see if there's any spots that you missed. See, I missed the whole back side of these legs coming off here. Because he has a mess of legs, man. Six legs. Make sure you get the inside of the legs with it. Because that's what's going to create shadow when you come back. Okay, if it's got too big of a pools on it, you want to take it and go down to the uh, paper towel there come back and you can grab if the pools are too big the only way you're gonna know if they're too big is from experience and you don't want it just sitting there making a big too big of a blob you want it to darken and you want it to sit in the recesses but you don't want big blobs sitting there turning black unless that's what you want and normally in this case you don't want them having a stipple and get way up under his butt where he's sitting on this thing to make sure that some shadow up in there right from this now like i said probably gonna go over this again with non-oil in certain deeper spots probably not the carapace with the non but probably on the sides there maybe the guy himself maybe we'll see so that's the first one let me click up and a lot of times if you paint from the top to the bottom with a wash it's going to be a washing down and you just got to grab it and take off the excess and take it out take out the excess and take it out you get too big of a drips coming off of it it's going to stain too much you can also instead of going back to the brush instead of going back to the paper towel you can take off some of these parts and go back up to the parts that didn't get enough like around those fingers and all so this one's done i'm gonna set him to the side to dry as well now i'm gonna start in the second one but i've got to take a short short break i gotta go get another glass of coca-cola because of my daggum raw ass uh, throat and talking so much, man, it makes it so uh, tough on me. I need to go get some medicine, so I'll be right back.
All right, and I get me a drink. <clears throat> and I'm going to wash the second one. Trying to start from the top on this one. I'm go ahead and wash this banner. Working my way down the body. <coughs> Getting all up in the cracks, crevices, and make sure that wash gets in there. Working it around. You're not really painting, you're just moving liquid around until it's gone until it's you know dispersed evenly I should say and the recesses are holding more and yeah oh, they don't have big splotches there you go I believe that one's about done. About ready. Take off that big, see that big excess I had on there. Let me take that off. Sometimes at the very bottoms of the pieces, you have them big drips. Ooh, I had a whole mess. These uh, <clears throat> these legs is deceiving. Because you have a whole bunch of them. You got an inside and an outside of them. So you got to make sure you get inside and outside on them legs. So he's done. I'm going to put him to the side and get the third one. Third one is going to start from the top as well. Getting him. So with the ones that, you know, as the liquid runs down. This is basically just going to outline and show me where all the crevices and, and the lines and all are but when I'm painting it. It brings it out. Man, these dang washes are sticky. They're daggum sticky. It gets on your hands, it's like almost like a glue. I guess it is an ink, like a paint. All right, I'm just about to get this one done. Got him all over now. I just got to take off. Some spots. It's got a little bit too much on it on the ends of them tips. <laughs> now I ain't doing his wings because I got another plan for his wings. I forgot that dang hand way up there. I got another plan for the wings that I'm gonna try out. But you know, man, I should have done the front edge of them wings. I need to do that. I need to go back on. The front edge of that wing is going to stay green like that. Ooh. So I need to go back over it with my greens. I'm going to have to grab the other ones up real quick and go back over them too. All right. Take some off. There they are. Okay, I think that one's ready. Let me... Go back over the other one's wings real quick. There you 
don't matter if I'm really fucking real messy on these because I'm going to paint the whole wing over in a silvery, silvery scheme. No. That's the second one. I need to do the wings on that very first one that we had done up. Come across, across. We only got four wings. A good thing. Four wings. I do hope that one day they do make a dang movie. But I, and then again, I don't. Because it's one of the only big franchises and stories and all like that is the Warhammer universe that's never had a real movie like that make. They could ruin it <laughs> more than likely. They will ruin it. More chance of that than in making a daggum good movie, sadly. You know, even if they pump a bunch of money into it nowadays, you can't guarantee nothing. About how good or bad the movie's gonna be. <coughs> Have a drink. All right, I'm done with that camo shade. Shut that up. Clean my brush out. Now, what's the next thing I need to do? Hmm. I reckon it would be to lay down some Nurgle rot on the bases of these fellas here. Of these putrid black cakes. And get them bases ready. Because if I can have all my bases ready, even if these figures are not all the way completely painted up, even if they're just the base coats and wash like that. If I got these bases done, like almost done. If I got the bases nice. They're going to look a lot more finished and a lot more. Than if there's paint marks all over the bases and wash marks, you know, the it ain't really done. You know, so I, I normally wait till the very, very end to do the bases at all. But in this case, I'm, I'm changing my gear now. I'm thinking. Thinking outside the box, which is, excuse me, what I try to do a lot of times with the painting and things like washing after dry brushing and stuff, washing after highlighting, you know, to smooth it out and tone down shit. So, things like that. All right, so Nurgle's Rot is a highly recommended technical paint. Coming from DW, of course. And it, it gives a slime look. It is slime. It is the liquid slime. And it takes to me for me to get on these bases to build it up enough to where you can't see through it and stuff. And it looks like it's like slimy. It takes about two coats. So I am going to get a dang brush, this one here, I believe. And I'm going to start painting in on the slime. And what I'm going to do, grab up some slime. You got to put it on thick. It's almost like putting on that glue. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do this first one wrong, and I'm going to show you. And I know there ain't no right and wrong, but I'm going to show you what ain't natural and that a lot of people make this mistake a lot of people they just put out little patches they say well I'm going to put a little patch of grass a little a little patch here and a little patch there and a patch there the scale is too thing. you got to make these bigger 
And see, now I'm going to connect them up together. And make these a lot bigger. Like I said, I'm just doing my shape right now and of how big it's going to be. And I'm getting the base down. Once it dries and it takes a little while, it may even be tomorrow before I can put another daggum coat on, on top of here. And I'm going to connect these two and let it touch the edge, you know, because it's bigger, you know. These patches are way bigger than these bases. So, we got that one about 50%, maybe 60%. Nurgle's rot. This in here. I'm not sure I got a bunch of it underneath where his gut is because I might want to add in later on daggone some uh, blood for the blood guy, which is a blood, really nice blood looking. Sometimes I mix them up together and I think I'm going to do that right now and show you. So a lot of times, man, I like mixing some of these things when they're still wet. Because then you can get a really good slimy blend that you really can't get once it's dry. You know? So I'm going to wet this up with Nurgle's Rot. And then I'm going to go get some blood for the blood guy on it. <clears throat> Watch that out. <sighs> Shake me up some blood for the blood guy. Yeah. With these technical paints a lot of times, man, I don't even put them on a palette. Because a lot of times they're very thick and all. But when I'm mixing, that's it. <laughs> but when I'm mixing wets, I will, so that I'm not going back to this palette. And I already see some old Nurgles Rod up in there that I had put up in there a long time ago when I was a mixing. But so I don't mix back into the other one. I'm just going to dab. I'm going to dab. Dab, dab, dab. Some of that blood for the blood guy. Up in that Nurgle's rot. And it gets really nasty. And it looks disgusting, very disgusting. And the dude is bleeding. And he's leaving a trail of it on the map. But it's pretty disgusting. When you mix the blood for the blood god and the Nurgle's rot. If it would only focus, folks. You get some disgusting effects down there with that. I might have went too much with the blood for the blood got on him. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on going with that Nurgle right. Blood got away for right now. On some of these black ones. Cause I'm more, I'm doing kind of a swamp thing. I'm gonna see. In just a minute with my plague bears, what I'm trying to do, the look I'm trying to go for on the plague bears is it's going to be the same look that I'm trying to go for on all these <clears throat> to tie the bases together, kind of so they all have very similar bases. I want that rock kind of to be coming up out of a, a bunch of goo. 
So we're going to name it to age. Here's another one that same model. That is the one thing about these Vikings. There really, really is only five, like, there's more than five poses, but there are only five lower halves. And no matter how you swing it, then you got you got those five leg setups. I wish there was just a little bit more variety than that, but there ain't. What can you do? <clears throat> More nose ride. Right. I'm gonna run out, man. I'm gonna tell you, cause I gotta put another coat on this after this dries, so it won't. This will look more pool like, and you can't see underneath. But I'm gonna have to buy another pot of it, I believe. Before it's all said and done. But you know, I've been going for a long time with this one pot. For a heck, man, almost a year, I think. And I went through a whole death guard with this pot, is what happened. That's what run this pot down. That daggum death guard. I run almost this whole pot down on a death guard. That's for 40k. Nervo 40k. Never would have believed I'd have been such a Nervo disciple. I said I was going to be back here in June. You can check on one of the videos. I said I was going to be a Nervo disciple. And I am now. But I never have before in 27 years or whatnot of playing these games. I have never been a Nervo. I've been with corn. I've dabbled with Slanesh. I have, of course, been loyal to the Emperor in in some armies, in some ways, from the very get-go. That was my main armies, and that's what I started with. I started out as loyal to the Emperor, and then I branched off into, into heresy and disloyalty, of course, to the Emperor in the other armies I had, and... Uh, but and then I then as I did that I got more in the corn and the world eaters with my uh with my legion there. And of course I dabbled in the black legion. And so when I came to Sigmar, I jumped on that corn pretty quick and built up a pretty nice corn army. And then I had other armies and stuff that was peripheral that I started building on. But this Nurgle's army is the first one that I've ever built from the top down. Meaning I went in and out and I got the centerpiece model. The great unclean one. And heck, the dang next week I got the Gotkin. And right after that I got a Maggot Lord. And I built from the top down instead of the bottom up. Because a lot of times I'll build an army and I think I want to build an army and I'll start building it from the bottom up, from the battle line, you know, from the regular troops. And I'll buy a bunch of them and then I'll start buying all the nice elite stuff that I buy. I won't. And then I start buying all the dang tanks and heavy equipment and all the uh, specialty models that I want from right there that's in the, you know, $40, $50 range. And then, if I get to this far, I might buy some models in the seventy to seventy-five dollar range, but I never get up around them hundred dollar models. And then I, by that time, I've usually gone on to another army. And for this one army, I decided to build from the top down. And I guess I like it better, man. It's a way more competitive army. And, uh, you know, I am blessed now with a lot more money, disposable income, you might call it, than I was before in the past at any other time in my life when I'm playing Warhammer. I got more disposable income now. 
and that I can put towards the Warhammer and buy whole armies because believe me, you know this Nurgle army it ain't cheap. You know how much them Black Kings are per box. It ain't nothing nothing to joke about. You know. <clears throat> but it's no there's no place to argue about GW's pricing and how they uh how they price i don't know i don't know man i i, I kind of understand the logic that the way that some people explain it about you know a lot of it depends on how good the thing does on the tabletop and how much of a supply and demand is there going to be for that model because models that do better on the tabletop of course are going to have a bigger supply or bigger demand and so they can, you know, let's take these malign portents, for instance. These malign portents heroes are clamshell $35 US per one. And your normal hero had been, be, had been being $25. But because of malign portents. And did these heroes having the extra powers in the here and now and in the line importance and all? If you want them, if you want that extra advantage in the game right now, well, it's ten more dollars, thirty-five dollars now. And then that ain't pay to play because I beat armies that had them hard bringers in them. And I didn't have one. But it is, well, okay, for $30, $35, I get six more cards that I can choose from in my line important spells. It's like getting six more, uh, not command points, but six more different command abilities that you can choose from during a round and, th and that's considerable considerable even the six that you can choose from during the round if you're playing with that one that's they are considerably powerful oh, one more guy they're considerably powerful so imagine doubling that because you have a, a harbinger and there is a lot of stuff you can do. Especially if one of them ones, if if a set of them six is a set of portents that you can pick from. Of course, you've already picked by which one of them heroes you bought. You've already picked from that. But then, you know, let's say you're not. I played it where you roll, too. I think that's more fair, actually. To where you don't pick which one of the sets of portents that you uh, are going to take. Each player just rolls and they have to take those cards. I think that's more fair, actually. But, uh, but some of them are tailored a little more defensively than others. Some of them are tailored a little bit more offensively than others. Uh, so I guess you can make an argument for it is it is pretty fair letting people pick because they want to make a, the better buffs for their army that might be a defensively minded army or might be an all, all brawler type army. All right, so I got all the Nurgle rights set in on these fellas. Okay, I'm backing them off. And they're going to have to dry before I can fool with them a lot more. I guess I could do their weapons and all. But the one thing I want to do, and then actually, man, after I do these things right here, I'm probably going to have to break it off to go get some food, get something to eat, because I should have eat before I started in on all this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the little bushes and stuff to these fellas here and get them ready to be finished off and sprayed. 
So what I've done, was I bought them from messing in bushes, and I normally use them on bases, and I'd use them on 1-100 scale of boards and stuff that I build. And I bought a mess of them up. So this pack I haven't even never been used. I've never been open. That I can put down onto these fellas here. And all I'm gonna need is a pair of tweezers and some super glue. And so what you do. Is you grab up one of these, a, a clump of them, is what you grab. Grab a clump. I don't want them little and tiny ones on here. Right, grab me a clump, turn it upside down, put a little super glue on it. Then I'm going to come over here to the flock part. The part that's got the flock on it, not the goo. I can overlap the goo a little bit. These can overhang. But it looks, it needs to be looking like it's growing out of the flock. And I'm going to do a couple. Where I see fit on all these dudes. And like I said, I'm flipping it over. I'm taking super glue. Giving it a little. And a lot of times I can use it on the on the line. Put it up close to the line between where the goo is. Is that even focused? Put it close to where they meet. Put it on the flock, but put it close to where they meet, and you're covering up lines with it. Let's try a different color. Let's see if this green will mix, clash too hard with it. And you get me a small piece. And this is some longer green, gray, green as green can be. A little bit. Now, if a little bit of it is too long, just too, too long, you can come up with these scissors and give it a haircut. Chop it off. Just work it, work it like a gardener, like a garden of Nurgle. Now, I believe he's done. He has enough stuff on him. And the goo looks like it's coming through the swamp. So he's done. I'm gonna go to him. Once again, grab glue, stick it down on top of the flock part that you put down. But it can overhang on top of the goo some. It can't overhang the side of the base. That's for damn sure. But if I put that down there we go. I'm going to put down a couple of these more more olive color ones and then I'll put down one green one, one small green one if I can get a small one smaller green one and put it in Right there. Make sure the edges ain't got a bunch of glue that's seeped over or a bunch of flock or whatnot. And this looks like it needs one more small piece of this camo color right on the back. And I'm going to oblige it right up by the heel to cover a bad line mark pull him up i give him a trim 
so he ain't hanging too far off the base. Trim him off a little bit. He's done. Bring his next one up. Who's up next? The most good thing about these and the part of the fun part about it is you really don't have to go and look. You just grab one of these, put the glue on it, and then you kind of look at where it goes. Because there's going to be a spot for it. There is going to be a spot every time. Right there. We got another one. Some glue. There's another spot. One more. Let's put one in big green, not big, but the brighter greens. Up front. Right there. That looks beautiful. We're going to cut it down here. We're going to cut it off the sides a little bit so it ain't hanging over too much. And there we go. He's done. That's three. Moving on along. Grab one more and see this is kind of a double. It gets grabbed off. And I'm going to put down. Stick it down with the tweezers. That's all. Let's grab some more. That's too big. That's a little one. A lot of time, man, you want to grab a little smaller than you think. Because smaller is better when it comes to a lot of this stuff here. It'll look more in scale. The smaller, the better. I think he's done. That's going to be four. Moving on. Oh, look at that one come up. That's too much. I like that look. Oh, there we go. That's going to be right there. Up front. Okay. Let's see one of them green ones. One of the lighter greens. Put it behind him. Here we go. Looking swamp like. Like a bayou. Look at that one. That would come out really swamp. Swamp like. Oh, good. Anyway, that's five. Here we go. I think that dog knows that when I finish this right here, I'm going to have to go eat. That's why he's barking. You hear him? Is that why he's barking, Whitey? Got to break some of this up. That's a nice one. I don't know how I may make this thing grass stuff, man, but they make it look real pretty realistic. I don't see how you can make it yourself for the price that they, you know, it's still six, seven dollars for one of these sheets. But I use if you're just doing miniature bases, you this stuff will goes a long way. On the back side of his heel. That's a bad, bad, bad line. I'm trying to cover up. You know, I already see he's sticking way over. So I take the scissors, trim him out. And I'm going to put one of them bright green ones, smaller one. There we go. Put that over here in the back. Right on the edge. Pinch it down. And once I get it down, 
as you see, I get it down, and then I close them up, and I push, and I use it as a pusher, as a stick. I grab the piece of grass, stick it down, let go of it, come off of it, grab, push them together, and then I use it as a poker to poke it down in. Come back, clip it off, get it haircut. Like a nice swamp look. Moving on, getting close. Getting close. On downhill run now, actually. We say come off a little bit more singularly. I'm having to really massage them to get them to want to come off there right. Well, dang. Get some trimmage. Yeah, you gotta be a barber too. A little bit of a barber. Play these games. Barber games. Alright, here we go. One more little one up front here. For him. I believe he's done. The leader. And he ain't gonna get nothing special. I ain't in the mood for it. I'm too hungry. He's gonna get a little bit bigger piece than other people have been getting. I guess that's something special. But he's got a little less slime on his boy, it looks like. And his uh, base. But we're going to give him a big bush in the back. Little bushes in the front. Oh, yeah. Like he stepped in a bush. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I've been drunk and stepped into some bad bush before. Like some of y'all probably has as well. <laughs> Watch out. Stepping in bad bush. You wind up married or worse. Or I don't know if there's worse. Is there worse than married? I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> See her choking me from the from beyond. Lord have mercy. Mm. Alright, I'm putting on a bunch of these smaller ones on him. He has a big line that come up on between the the glue and the daggum Nurgle's rot. I'm having to cut that. Man, he says are working a charm when his stuff is too long. I believe he's done. One more to go. Give him a big old chunker right here. Oh yeah. Give him another. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with these losers. Bad gun plague bears. I will. Uh, if I'm going 2,000 points right at this moment, I have to use them in a 2,000 point list. But I'll be darned 
if I'm going to use them, I think I'm going to have to get 10 more of them. Because I, I think a 10-man block of them just ain't got enough pumpkins. They just can't do the job. Much of any job. Much less holding a line or to, much, I don't know. Maybe they can't. Maybe they could, in theory, hold something because of the disgusting resilience save and this and that. You, you know, you get that even against mortal wounds, of course. So in theory, you know, they could they could hold out against something. But I just I found that they're too high priced. I believe. I think uh, I think they're an eighty point unit, man. That that they got priced at one twenty. I think it's an eighty point unit. Hell, they ain't really much better than than blood reavers. They don't have any kind of crazy attack. You get one attack each, and one wound each. That ain't nothing, man. Not into the, not in the game today. So he's done, and they're starting to look a lot better, a lot better with their bases like that. So even though I hadn't gone all the way around the bases and just retouched the green with some death guard green, this unit right here. It's starting to look a lot better. With the bases done. The bases are almost done. I do need to go around it with the, with that Death Guard green. But I'm too hungry right now. And so I'm going to have to get off of here. So I appreciate everybody and anybody that can come and watch Caspian. I appreciate everybody that come and watch, and I hope that if you watch this video in the future, you know, of course, you will subscribe and give it a like if you want, and I will see y'all soon again. Appreciate it.